uh, like Cabernet, these pair very well with duck bill pliers. And What's going on everybody? Uh, my name is Bryce. I am an a IA with about 10 years experience in general aviation and I've been teaching at a part 147 school now for about the last five years. And this is going to be my first video on is being an IA worth it? So the first thing, um, obviously an IA stands for inspection authorization. Once you get your AMP and you've had your AMP for three years, you are qualified uh, to take a written test and get your inspection authorization, at which point you can sign off annual inspections, inspections of major repairs and alterations, and some other things. So what tools do I use for an annual and how much do some of them cost? Now, this is obviously not part of an annual inspection, but a lot of these other inspection tools are. So to get my IA, I went to Baker School of Aeronautics in Tennessee. I think I spent about $900 total. I drove there from San Antonio, Texas um, and came back with an IA. It was wonderful. Um, but since then, I've been doing annual inspections. So what are some of the tools that I use to do an annual inspection? I'm going to start over here from the right and I'm going to work my way to the left. So I've got some engine tools here. I've got some airframe stuff and then you know some sheet metal tools and whatnot. So the first thing I wanna show you is this. This is a right system. It's often called a time right or a fly right. If you're gonna do the, or sorry, mag right. If you're gonna time your magnetos, you can stick this over the spinner and this is a protractor. It allows you to find top dead center, zero this, turn back to whatever degree the magnetos are supposed to fire and then check that the magnetos are firing properly with this little magneto tester here. However, the nice thing about this system is it also comes with the fly right, which is, again, this goes in there. I'm not sticking it in there because there's a magnet and it can be tough to get out. But you put the little protractor in here, you put it on the flight control, you zero it in the neutral position, you go up, you go down, and you can ensure that the flight controls are correct. So this is one of those kind of combination tools uh, that if you're getting into general aviation, I would recommend buying save my bacon quite a few times. I do actually rather like these. We also use them at the school that I teach at. So continuing on the engine, obviously the engine has spark plugs. So when I pull those out, I'll put those in a plug tray. I don't have it with me couldn't, because I couldn't find it, but I do also have a spark plug gapping tool and a spark plug cleaning tool. And the spark plug cleaning tool is just a silica blaster. You put it in there, you blast it, you stick the spark plug in the uh, tester side, you put some pressure and it tests the electrode to make sure that it's firing properly. So I do that. And then I also have a differential compression tester that is calibrated, which you push this, you put your cylinder on top dead center. Every cylinder has to go to top dead center. You put this on there, you connect to the uh, air compressor, you'll put in 80 PSI on this side, and then this will read whatever pressure the cylinder is holding. If you're in automotive, they often call it a leak down test. Uh, aircraft, we call it a differential compression test, but it allows you to test where the cylinder may be leaking from. If it's the rings, if it's the uh, the valves, whatever it may be. Uh, let's continue to the torque wrenches. So I do have, these aren't actually my torque wrenches, these are the school's torque wrenches, but I do have a couple of torque wrenches um, in various sizes that are calibrated. When I run into something like a gear leg that I don't have a torque wrench big enough for, I will go to my buddy uh, who's an IA and I will often borrow it from him, which leads me into my next point. There's some tools that I don't have, but you'll need as an IA, especially if you're doing um, gear swings. So like one of those would be jacks and a tail stand or a tail weight. I don't carry those things because they are very expensive, but a friend of mine who's been an IA for many years, he purchased them. So whenever I need them, I rent them from him. Uh, but yeah, torque wrenches, they have to be calibrated as well. And I, I should specify here that any of your measurement tools in aviation need to be calibrated. So moving on from here, we'll go to wiring. I don't keep a whole lot of electrical tools with me, um, not for annual inspections at least, because most of the time they don't need anything major. But I do keep a good pair of wire strippers and I do keep a good pair of an aircraft crimping tools. Now aircraft crimping tools are different in the sense that they crimp in two places, not just one. You could get away with a automotive crimper, but it's not gonna do as nice of a job. These can also be calibrated. They can be calibrated to close a specific amount when you squeeze them. So I usually bring a pair of those with me just in case I have to repair any wires or butt splices um, should anything come up. Next, I also have a Rapco 
brake lining replacement tool. So the brake pads on aircraft, unlike cars, are riveted in place with sort of blind, they go in and they swell out on the back side. Uh, this is the tool you use to take those out. It pushes them out from that side. Then this pops off here, this one's stuck, but this pops off of here. This guy falls down in the bottom and you're able to uh, swell a new rivet in place and replace brake lining. So that's pretty easy. Usually I always have one of those. You're always gonna need a pair of safety wire pliers. Um, if you don't know what safety wire pliers are, they have this little spiral thing in the back of them, but you, these are stuck. You open these up, you'll clamp down on some wire, and then when you pull it, they spin. Pretty straightforward. So you usually have a pair of those. Uh, like Cabernet, these pair very well with duckbill pliers and some diagonal side cutters. If I get into a situation where I am going to do some sheet metal, I almost always have my Clecos and my Cleco pliers. If you don't know what Clecos are, I will show you. You squeeze them like this, and basically you put them down in a hole of two pieces of metal you're trying to hold together. I would get the one that's messed up, and it will clamp them together so that you can do sheet metal work. I, again, this would need to be calibrated. I'll sometimes also keep with me a uh, vernier scale or a caliper of some kind, just that way if I need to measure brake discs or anything like that, I've got something with me to measure those things. Uh, but this is not something you use all the time as an aircraft mechanic. And this is not something you would use if you're doing like an engine overhaul. If I was doing an engine overhaul, I would get an entire set of vernier micrometers and I would use those because they go down to four decimal places. This does not. I realize I'm speaking very fast, but you know, I'm trying to get through it. Next thing I would use for flight controls is this. This is a cable tensiometer. So I would go to my control cables for my aircraft and you open this up, cable goes in here like this, squeezes down and it will read the tension here on the cable. Now. I do have two of these. Uh, this is the smaller one. It reads 1 16th cables, 1 8th cables, and 3 30 seconds cables. I do have one that reads 5 30 seconds and 2 16 or 1 8 cables as well, but that one is obviously bigger and you don't really see cables that size in general aviation as much. Okay, so the last thing I will show you um, is this guy. This is a USATCO 4X rivet gun kit. I don't know if you can see this or not, but it came with a USATCO 4, 4X rivet gun, and then it came with all of the sets and all of the bucking bars to install rivets, including a skin flush rivet set, a regular flush rivet set, and it came with some, uh, some curved ones, so when you have to get down inside smaller holes, then it came with some, some longer ones, so yeah. Use that not very often, but every once in a while uh, doing an annual inspection, you'll notice like a rivet or two missing or something just needs a small sheet metal repair. And sometimes it's easier to just do it and get that out of the way. So some honorable mentions that I did not talk about. Um, oil filter removal tools. So you take the oil filter off and then a cutter, like a, like a pizza cutter kind of wheel thing, like a, like a tubing cutter goes on there. You make a bunch of passes and the oil filter pops open so that you can inspect it. Do you have to have that? No, but it certainly makes it a lot easier. I almost always have a couple different mirrors with me and a couple different flashlights with me. I always use a flashlight and a mirror. And then I will usually also have a 2X and a 4X uh, magnifying glass in case I need to look for cracks or anything like that. So all in all, um, I'm not going to break down the individual prices. I could do that, but that would take like 30 minutes. All in all, I would say all of my tools have probably cost me, I don't know, about $3,000. And then, like I said, each of the torque wrenches needs to get calibrated every year. The differential compression tester needs to get calibrated every year. The micrometer or the vernier caliper needs to get calibrated every year. This has to get calibrated every year and so on and so forth. So I will admit to you, some of my tools I do actually share with that other IA that's a, a buddy of mine and will split the cost on calibration. Um, so like torque wrenches, for example, they're you know, $100 each. So we'll just split the cost on those and then when I need them, I go pick them up from the airport and I borrow them real quick and then I bring them back. Uh, same thing like the jacks, we have a sort of a good deal worked out where when I need to borrow the jacks, he lets me borrow them and when he needs help doing a gear swing or an annual on something, I help him do 
a gear swing or an annual. So I will give you like a, a sort of an insight to how much some of this costs. The rivet gun, I know this was $425. Um, I don't remember how much the cable tension was. Um, obviously you could look up the right system and, and find out how much that is. So how much do I make on an annual inspection? That's gonna be another video. How much will an annual inspection cost you as an owner is gonna be another video. So stick around for those. Like, comment, subscribe, tell me what tools you'd like to see. And as always, be easy. One last thing I will mention, and I didn't, didn't bring it up. In general aviation, almost all the hardware used on the aircraft is actually standard. You are going to see very, very, very little metric tools, which is kind of nice because everything in my toolbox is standard. But it does lead to a problem when I go home to work on my Miata and everything is either A6, 8, 10, or 12.